Okay, now that we're all locked in the egg, I suppose it's time to go. So, I am Alex CG. I'm the Europe and UK project lead for Space Gambit. And I say CG because I was blessed with a very long and complicated surname. So just keeping it short. Space Gambit, well, Gambit stands for the Global Alliance of Makers Building Interstellar Technologies. Bit ambitious, we're not gonna get there tomorrow, but we're aiming for maybe the day after when we get to Alpha Centauri. Uh, yep, Space Gambit is funded by the US government. We've got half a million dollars over two years, and our aim is to help build mankind towards a spacefaring civilization. We're not gonna get there overnight, like I said. You know, I'd love to get to Alpha Centauri tomorrow, but not happening. But we're starting off on the Earth, and maybe going to low Earth orbit. If we're really lucky, we'll get some stuff on the moon in our two-year program. But as for the asteroid belt, other planets, and other galaxies, might have to wait a few more years on that. The way we do all this is we open the doors for cool proposals from anybody. If you have a cool idea for space stuff, let me know. Uh, one of the key things is, though, you have to be associated with a hackerspace or a makerspace, or a community space. Do you all know what a hackerspace is? Anyone? Okay, a few hands going up. So, I'll explain. Imagine your shed, or your workshop, or your kitchen, or your garden, or wherever you love to do your cool projects that really matter to you. The place where you feel most alive when you're working on stuff. Well, a hackerspace is like 10 or 100 of those under one roof with people sharing ideas, sharing projects, collaborating, working together. And they are amazing, amazing places. There's one in Newcastle. There are several I know in Holland. There's one in Edinburgh, Leeds, all over the place. Uh, yeah, you can go there, meet people, learn, socialize, collaborate. Loads of equipment like 3D printers, like laser cutters, like the things that made this badge. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't look into the laser with your remaining eye. And they're all over the UK, uh, and they're all over the world now as well. So wherever you are, there's probably a hackerspace or makerspace nearby. If there isn't, set one up. Uh, this is a picture of the music hackerspace in London. They're moving to a, London, sorry, is one of the biggest hackerspaces in the world now, and they're moving to a bigger location soon. Uh, this is a hackerspace in Iraq. They're opening up now in Iraq, Afghanistan, all over, war all over countries that have been war-torn and going through a lot of trouble. This helps bring the communities together, lets them work together to build projects that help rebuild their countries. And there are also things like bio-hacker spaces around as well, which focus on genetic stuff, playing around with, well, anything biological. And even NASA are getting in on the act now. This is at NASA Ames in California. They've built an internal hackerspace and they're opening it up as well to citizen scientists and the maker community, which is pretty awesome. So why do we want to go to space? I mean, it's a big thing. There's a lot of stuff going on down here as well. Well, one reason is the spin-off technologies. You know, a lot of people talk about why are we spending so much money on space when we could be spending money down here. Well, a large part of it is spin-offs, like uh, over here, we've got NASA. They've done pioneering work in prosthetic limbs, which help people who've lost arms or legs have a much better life. We've got uh, material for heat resistance, which help firefighters and save lives. Water purification, which brings clean water to communities all over the world. And advances in solar panels, which help provide solar panels to charge African farmers' cell phones to help them make a living. Another reason is, I believe exploration is in our DNA. It's part of what makes us human. If we see a mountain, we have to climb it. If we see a river, we have to bridge it. And if we see a big shiny rock up there called the moon, we have to go to it. That's part of what we do. It's out there, we go there. And you know, if we don't do this, well, in February, a uh, meteor struck Russia with the force of, I think it was 500 Hiroshima's. Pretty nasty, quite a few people got injured. And the big thing is, we didn't even know this rock was coming. 
The next time we don't know why it's coming, it could be the big one. It could wipe us out. In the words of Larry Niven, the dinosaurs became extinct because they didn't have a space program. And if we become extinct because we don't have a space program, well, it'll serve us right. And there's so much cool open source space stuff going on already. We've got the Open Lunar guys. They're building their own space suits, totally DIY. And there's actually another group building space suits. And they've even come up with a little thing inside the helmet. Because when you're wandering around and your nose is itchy, right now you just scratch your nose, fine. If you're in a space helmet, not so easy. So they've got a little nose scratcher built in. They think of everything. We've got Copenhagen suborbitals, some crazy Danish guys who are building their own rockets. And it's a totally DIY mentality. They don't have to go through all the red tape that NASA does. Sometimes they'll just get a hairdryer and wire it into the design to fix some problem. We've got open source ecology. These guys are building the Global Village Construction Kit. It's everything you need to boot up civilization. I think it's the 50 most important machines. So they've got a brick maker, a 3D printer, an open source tractor, an open source car that can all be built using modular reusable components. And this is really cool down here on Earth. I'd love to see how we can adapt this to work in a moon colony or a Mars colony one day. We've got groups like NanoSatisfy who provide the ArduSat, which is a really cheap, really tiny, well, I say really cheap, really cheap compared to normal satellites. It's about 6,000 to 8,000 US dollars. So about 4,000, 6,000 quid. Um, but it's a tiny satellite, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. And universities and hackerspaces are working on these now and piggybacking them on other launches. So the cost of putting stuff into space is really coming down because of open source. We've even got this, a uh, little Kicksat, which is about that big. I forgot to bring my own. But it's basically Sputnik on a chip. And it's cheap as anything, and they're really dirt cheap, under 100 bucks, I think. Now, those projects are already out there. At Space Gambit, what we do is we fund projects from hackerspaces and projects associated with hackerspaces. Uh, we have three main focus areas. One of them is education, because I believe if we want to make a future, well, we need to make a future. So we're talking about all ages education, public support for space, uh, maker education. And because maker education is hands-on, it's open source, anybody can do it. That means anybody can learn, anybody can get involved. And right now, the UK is facing a massive shortage of science, technology, and engineering majors. Educating people in maker ed with a space focus can help turn that around and help future generations. The other one is near-Earth economy. Uh, like I said, small satellites. So testing, uh, testing small sats, putting them up there, doing experiments while they're up there. And the one that speaks most closely to me is habitats. If we're going to go to Mars or the moon, how do we build a colony? How do we survive up there? How do we process water? How do we process waste? How do we generate electricity? And this has so many applications down here on Earth as well. Water filtration technology we build for up there can help people in dry countries, for example. And there are so many applications of that. When I say funding, we, we just closed our first round of funding proposals, and we're looking through them now. In that case, we were funding up to 20,000 US dollars per project, about 12,000 pounds. And they're very quick turnaround three to six months to get something ready and usable and showable. Uh, associated with a hackerspace or similar project or similar space. We can't do rockets, unfortunately, because things that are destructive and go bang, yeah, not a good idea, our funders decided. And the deadline for the next round will be late this year or early next year. So if you want to send us a proposal, if you have an idea, you've got lots of time to refine it. And everything we do has to be open source, open hardware, open everything. So the whole world can use this. It's open to everyone. And I'm talking a lot about makers. But I, the thing we want to do 
is not just build a space program. NASA or big companies like SpaceX, they can do that. That's no problem. But our aim is to build a spacefaring civilization for all of humanity. And that means we need all of humanity to get involved. And that means all of you here. So, you know, we need scientists to tell us why our projects aren't working, why our projects go bang. We need engineers to help us fix these projects after they go bang. We need teachers to connect with kids. We need marketers to help us tailor our message and get the word out about making and why we need to go to space. We need everybody involved. In 1969, Neil Armstrong took one small step for man. And a lot of people think we haven't really done that much since then. So now's our chance to make a difference. Our chance to actually get involved with space, because we can. Because it is coming down to the level that we can do it, and we can make a difference. So like I said, I'd love to hear your ideas about how we can do this. And yeah, if you have any ideas or you want to get in touch about anything at all, you can contact me here. Yeah, the long name, Alex Kjorten Griffiths, just Alex CG. Alex CG is Space Gambit. I'm on Twitter. The website is spacegambit.org. And yeah, get in touch. And let's help us get to the stars. Thank you. So, what questions do you have? Um, yes. You mentioned you're not doing rockets. Uh, have you also re removed yourselves from all studies of propulsion, or are you only interested in non-propulsive technologies? Basically, we want to play it safe. So, we're not looking at propulsion. We're not looking at rockets, things that shoot up or go bang. Not something we could really do. I mean, if it's like educational small rocketry, that's no problem. But if it's, you know, missile, te something that could be repurposed into a missile or warp drives, which NASA, I believe, are working on, it's a bit beyond us. Um, do you have any examples of projects that were submitted in that first round that was disclosed? Well, right now we're going through them. We're, we can't really talk about them yet, but we should be releasing our decisions on which ones we fund in a few weeks. And we'll be talking to all the other projects we didn't fund, see if they want to be publicized, because you know, we've got like 40 or 50 proposals to look through. And is that just from the UK, or is that from like across the... Uh, it's from all over the world. We're a totally global program. We're based out of the US uh, in Hawaii. Nice place to go. <laughs> and I cover, well, the rest of the world. It depends on the budgets of the projects. Um, we're considering all kinds of things at the moment. And we're looking to get additional funding, so that'll mean funding more projects later on. And that's still to be decided. Any more? No? Well, great. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you.